Poem for the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. O oh, poorest country, this is not your name. You should be called Beacon. You should be called Flame. Almond and Bougainvillea. Garden and Green Mountain. Villa and Hut. Girl with red ribbons in her hair, books under arm, charmed by the light of morning. Charcoal seller in black skirt, encircled by dead trees. You, country, are merchant woman and eager clerk, grandfather at the gate, at the crossroads, with the flashlight with all in sight. Thank you to Danielle George for that beautiful poem. And welcome to Health Equity International, St. Boniface Hospital 2022 Gala. My name is Michelle David, and I'm the Health Equity International and St. Boniface Hospital Chair of the Board of Directors. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we honor St. Boniface Hospital heroic staff, along with the extraordinary Barry Landry, Board Member Emerita. I hope you will enjoy learning more about the dedication and commitment of tonight's honoree. Even as we celebrate, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that this year was one of profound loss for so many in Haiti. Ever deepening unrest surrounding the tragedies wrought by last year's earthquake bring even greater challenges to our patients and staff. But we will not define this year or Haiti by the sum of its trouble. This year was also a year of healing, unity, and hope. Together, our brave staff and thousands of supporters like you came together to ensure that record number of patients received the care they deserve when they needed it the most. I hope you feel proud, as I do, to be part of this tremendous work. Now, I am pleased to introduce you to our host for the evening, Karen, Keating, and Sarah. Good evening. My name is Karen Keating Ansara, a longtime friend and supporter of Health Equity International, St. Boniface Hospital. I am pleased to be your host for this evening. I'm so glad you've joined us tonight as we celebrate all the ways in which we have mobilized hope and saved lives during this tumultuous year in Haiti. On August 14th, 2021, a massive earthquake took the lives of more than 2,200 people in Southern Haiti, left more than 675,000 in need of urgent humanitarian aid and shattered the region's fragile health system. As the largest healthcare provider in Southern Haiti, Health Equity International St. Boniface Hospital immediately jumped into action to provide urgent care to survivors. All the while, we continued to care for record numbers of patients in our routine services, even as dangerous unrest made it harder than ever for patients to get to our doors. And we continued to expand our services by creating the region's only permanent orthopedic surgery program. All of this and so much more was possible because thousands of supporters just like you chose to walk alongside Health Equity International and the people of Haiti, unshakable in the belief that everyone deserves access to affordable, dignified, and quality health services. First, in tonight's program, we will hear from Connor Shapiro, President and CEO of Health Equity St. Boniface. Connor will guide us through a video that highlights the impact the organization has had in Southern Haiti during this complex year. For more than 30 years, Health Equity International St. Boniface Hospital has been providing world-class health care for the people of Southern Haiti. We are the largest care provider in the region, a population of over 2.3 million, 
and have the only 24-7 emergency services. Everyone who comes to our doors receives the quality, dignified care they deserve, no matter what. In August 2021, a 7.2 magnitude earthquake devastated much of southern Haiti. In the following 12 months, we saw over a quarter million patient visits at St. Boniface Hospital and in our mobile clinics, more than twice the number of visits we saw in the previous year. And it happened despite the very real challenges of political unrest that paralyzed much of the country and massive global supply shortages that made transport of meds and supplies nearly impossible. The earthquake rendered more than 55% of health facilities in the region unusable. HEI St. Boniface responded by deploying mobile clinics to 89 of the most heavily impacted communities in the region. These clinics saw 106,000 patient visits in the next nine months and provided care that no one else could. Back at St. Boniface Hospital, more than 4,000 women trusted us to deliver their babies in the year after the earthquake. 90% of them made dangerous, hours-long treks to get to our hospital, and nearly half needed a life-saving C-section. We nursed over 1,000 babies back to health in our NICU, the only one on the Southern Peninsula. In our pediatrics department, more than 7,000 children received emergency surgical care, treatment for malnutrition, and care for chronic conditions like sickle cell anemia and more. And through our community health program, we provided over 12,000 doses of essential childhood vaccines. Our surgeons performed a record-shattering 5,266 procedures including 1,700 orthopedic visits. The newly established ortho department builds on our spinal cord injury program and expands our capacity to treat devastating orthopedic injuries, which happen every day on the roads of Haiti. The hospital's emergency department played a critically important role in our earthquake response, as well as serving the daily emergency needs of the population. Throughout this year of urgent need, violence and unrest has made it virtually impossible to retrieve critical medications and supplies from Haiti's ports. Yet every week, our operations teams risk their lives traveling across the country to ensure we are never without the tools we need to save lives. Their efforts underpin everything we do. Whether you're an active donor or have simply helped spread the word about our work, Supporters like you help make everything we do possible. In the coming year, we expect to make a bigger impact in Southern Haiti than ever before as we continue to repair the region's shattered health system and navigate ongoing unrest. We need you on our team now more than ever. We hope you'll continue to stand with us in doing this important work. Now that we've looked at the data, let's take a more personal look at this impact. In the next video, we will meet patients who received critical care at St. Boniface Hospital over the past year. They are still alive today, thanks to support from donors like you. We are so grateful that they have shared their moving stories of hope and healing with us. Et puis le municipal ça tire là, les gars ils m'ont gros poussé à monter. Et puis là à peine m'avance et puis devant les vêtements m'avance et puis devant les gars ils me regardent là à terre. Mais tu peux tout ça, il n'a qu'à ça en deux, tu peux tout ça tirer là pour quoi? À prier même au pied à pas qu'à pas qu'à toucher à terre. Donc c'est le problème, c'est ça qui vient, il vient, il c'est ça qui vient grafouiller. Mais il va, il va, il va, il va blesser. Mais t'as comme une qui tombe grigé. Ça lui est toujours dans même 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 crasé par en dedans. Il prend plus de responsabilité. Là, il vient nous rendre des béliers, il vient pour tout le monde, et puis il mettait dans ses hommes. Et puis il tout, il tout bas, et puis il tout vient dans sa libération. Et ben mes exigences, la mission tout, tout vient y arriver. C'est bon quand même de passer ma vie. Et même la machine elle est cachée, bon bon bâtiment, bon non bah là, il est après c'est nous en pile dans le bidet là. Ça a eu été acheté, ça a eu été nettoyé, ça a eu. Jusqu'à présent, il est au même. Les mêmes dérives, il faut des blancs et des nains, des nids, bout de la mêmes dérives. 
si je suis de blanc, je ne pas de Je ne suis pas de Je ne suis pas de blanc. Je ne suis pas Considérer elle comme un berceau pour Haïti, c'est-à-dire un refuge en quelque sorte. Parce que c'est vrai que nous sommes dans la zone sud, mais nous pouvons recevoir les gens dans le nord, les gens qui sont aussi dans le sud-est, et par une question de distance qui est capable d'empêcher les gens de venir dans l'hôpital. C'est l'hôpital qui est transféré. Il dit que je pas de pas de de Le Batnayo, il met journée, nuit, pas faire au peuple. Quatre, cinq jours, moi, tout, pas faire au peuple pour ta faire avec un bébé. Et ça, pas prendre. Moi-même, je prie pour eux, je prie pour moi, je prie pour eux, je prie pour tout le monde. Je ne peux pas passer à pas seulement pas maintenant, parce que pas seulement pas maintenant, c'est ça là, ok? Même là, je ne suis pas maintenant, je prie, je prie pour tout le monde. All of those patients place so much trust in Health Equity St. Boniface. I found their stories deeply moving. Dangerous roadblocks and protests have made travel to St. Boniface Hospital harder than ever. The earthquake compounded these issues by destroying more than 55% of health facilities in the region, leaving tens of thousands of survivors without any access to even the most basic care. St. Boniface Hospital had to step up and expand its reach far beyond its walls. In the next segment, you will see how our mobile clinic program brought St. Boniface's world-class health services into the most remote communities and saved lives that otherwise would have been lost. vraiment objectif clinique mobile là donc c'est aider aider les gens qui ont besoin de soins donc nous connaissons que grand pile monde qui était qui était victime dans tremblement de terre là c'est permettre c'est faciliter monde ça yo monde qui peuvent venir radio c'est faciliter aux jeunes soins de santé parce que nous connaissons que nous mon pays tant qu'Haïti donc pas gain en pile soins de santé sont pas extrêmement difficile donc nous pas gain comme pour aller l'hôpital et route pas gain route donc ça veut dire que grand pile monde qui à cause de ça au mourir la caillou. Donc notre objectif pour capable rapprocher nos deux populations pour capable permettre que yo gain accès à soins de santé. M'a sorti mené tout mon école et puis me tout en des annonces là et puis me dit Jean lien et puis m'a monté là. On t'a juste dit gain soleil mon nom dit me pas penser à Jean de Baisaro parce que ça m'a venir chercher à me connait la bonne pour santé. Si tout nous on allait nous on si tout si à pied au bralé son côté on va prendre pas de cinq et dedans on va arriver là clinique là vraiment vraiment est efficace et important c'est vraiment utile le monde qui vit dans zone nord parce que après tremblement de terre 14 août t'as été fin passé nous nous t'es vraiment affecté on s'est ridé sans toi ou pas si vous êtes prêts les finis t'es à te virer tout dehors pas de propre senti mon lot mon lot mon senti mal à l'aise je senti je senti les map marché je senti me léger je senti me fier parce que moi je ne les soin parce que nous devons dépasser face aux gens là ok donc défi qu'on a fait face à c'est essayer de porter le plus que possible les soins de qualité en vente, il y a une série de programmes de santé qui étaient disponibles dans cette là par exemple planification familiale, malnutrition, okay? programme VIH, tuberculose. 
après le tremblement de terre, un pilade de vin arrivé camper. Mais avec tout ce que nous venons de porter, nous avons un programme ça qui vient de recommencer. Et en plus, l'affluence est venue plus, donc nous venons de recevoir plus malade. Et ça, le besoin de tous les joueurs, il est rapide. Parce que le gars doit aller au local, il est livré, c'est marché, il a marché, il n'a pas un service là bien. Bon côté, il a la gain, la plus facile, il bon côté. Moi, j'ai un système, même j'ai trois là-dedans, c'est petit ton sem, sem n'a mouru. Depuis le 14 août, papa Timoun est mouru tout le 12 janvier, Timoun n'a pas gagné aidé. C'est moi qui suis responsable en tant que grand sœur. Nous avons un staff qui est motivé, qui est flexible, qui ne peut pas et fort pour aider les gens dans la zone, même si ils sont même si c'est un côté qui est difficile pour atteindre. Je prends soin de bien, je viens de façon de servir avec bon, C'est là que je suis toujours venu. Each palm counts. They say, "Your cell doit pas manger kalalu." If you can't eat gumbo with just one finger, then each finger counts. Each palm that fits into another palm counts. The feet also matter. The toes of a man's baby boy are important. All ten. He totters, learning to walk, easing toward his mother, who waits for him, standing equal to life. As all who meet her in the work of birth matter, in the carriage of care matter, in the truth of tout moun se moun, and its vision of wholeness and repair. Are we not all made with the same hearts? Do we not all deserve the harvests of each other? The harvests of enough? The sites of health matter. The combit counts. The many hands put together to lift up the body, which is the house of the shining self. O oh, workers of the house of the shining self, you nurses, surgeons, midwives, community health workers, doctors, donors, pharmacy team, therapy team, sanitation team, warehouse team, this is a poem for you. O oh, members of the family of life, this is a poem for you. Thank you, Danielle, for writing this original poem in honor of our staff and patients for this event. We are honored by your words. Now it is my great pleasure to introduce one of tonight's honorees, our friend and partner, Barry Landry, philanthropist, trustee of the Landry Family Foundation, and board member emerita of Health Equity International St. Boniface Hospital. On behalf of all of us at Health Equity, St. Boniface, and all of the people whose lives you have touched, thank you. Thank you, Connor, for your very kind remarks. I'm truly humbled by this honor and would like to accept it on behalf of Health Equity's heroic team, both here and in Haiti. I'd also like to thank my family and friends who are here tonight and to acknowledge my three children, Kim, Jen, and Chris, along with my very good friend, Beth Floor, who has worked tirelessly to help make this event so special. Given the complexity and unprecedented challenges that Haiti faces today, Health Equity's team's commitment to providing essential health services to the people of Southern Haiti, especially the most vulnerable, has never faltered. For Health Equity, providing essential health care is a moral imperative and a social justice issue that should be central to all medicine and all public health. It's startling to me that there is such disparity between access to healthcare here in comparison to less resourced countries. 
When my daughter Kim was put on bed rest with her twins at 23 weeks gestation and bunch shy of a full-term birth, we were grateful that we had access to many quality hospitals. Luckily, the twins were born healthy and never needed any extraordinary medical intervention. But if we had needed the special care, we knew we could receive that care. We had choices. Most of the women in Haiti have very few choices. Public hospitals provide only the minimum of care. Patients must bring their own food, medicine, and medical supplies. St. Boniface is entirely different. If her mother comes to St. Boniface in danger of losing her baby, she can take solace in the fact that she will get the very best medical care. Supporting St. Boniface, especially the Maternal Neonatal Health Center, has been a privilege as it has been a way for me to pay forward the care our family received here in Boston. In closing, I want to thank everyone here tonight or watching virtually for supporting this amazing hospital, which is such a beacon of light and a beacon of hope, especially during these challenging times. Thank you, Barry, for those moving words and for your years of service to Health Equity St. Boniface. Now we'll learn more about Barry and her impact as we hear from friends and colleagues. Hi, I'm Kim Gwynn Landry. And I'm Jennifer Landry Lee. We are Barry's daughters and fellow trustees of the Landry Family Foundation. Thank you for joining us this evening. It is such a privilege to be able to recognize our mother for all the hard work she has done to support Health Equity International and the people of Haiti. Mom, congratulations on this well-deserved honor. You have been a vital contributor to Health Equity success for over a decade. Thanks to your support, the dedicated doctors, nurses, and technicians of St. Boniface Hospital have the expertise and infrastructure to provide critical care to hundreds of thousands of Haitians. As your daughters, we have been inspired by your unwavering commitment to make the world a better place. You lead with your heart and you truly live your values. You have always believed that education and healthcare are fundamental human rights. Propelled by these beliefs, you have partnered with like-minded individuals and organizations to leverage your impact and ensure that these rights are realized for countless people across the globe. We're inspired by your sense of urgency, your deep compassion, and your strategic philanthropy. We are so thankful for the example you have set, and we will do our best to pass on your ideals to our own children. For me, Barry Landry has been a model of compassion, deliberate attention, never giving up, and just hanging in there till it's done. How do you describe Barry Landry? Wow. I, a smile's coming to my face because there's a smile on my hat right now. I think that Barry's grace, kindness, generosity, and open-heartedness is something that I try to emulate. Our work would look very different if everyone was as generous as Barry. The fact that Barry is always thinking about those who don't have access to services or don't have access to care makes her a truly remarkable person that is a model for all of us. We need people who care and people who, who know exactly what is going on. And she's been there for a long time, so she knows. And especially now in these situations in Haiti that uh, that support is very, very important to us. She is a dear friend and arguably the most important private philanthropic partner to UNICEF in our child protection work globally. And I think she really has set a model for what authentic partnership is and that we're each bringing our own passions and, and purpose to these conversations and that we each have a role to play. I think it's been one of the most fulfilling experiences of my career to have worked with Barry in that way. Barry is a moral force in the world. It's not just me who knows that, everybody around her knows that. She inspires people with her vision around protecting the most vulnerable people in the world. The work is hard and having a lightness of spirit at times is very important. And I think that although Barry feels this work deeply, you get that lightness of spirit and thoughtfulness and just a love of fun. I think when you bring that to the spirit of philanthropy, it doesn't just make things fun, but it, it, it puts an energy into it. It's just this genuine 
generosity of heart and spirit. Uh, Barry's got that. When the question is asked, what do you need most and where will it make an impact? Like truly, honestly, is asking that question and it drives how she directs her philanthropy. And whenever there is a problem, she asks questions. And we heard so many times also, you have challenges. How can we help you to get better? Or how, what can we provide to have that? So that's, that's the kind of support that is really needed. And we, we know we have it, we have it. Whenever we have needed someone to step up and get involved with a program that we believe is truly important, Barry's always the first in line to make sure that program happens. And that kind of generosity is infectious. Other people see that and want to get behind it as well. She will say, how can I help? But it's not just, how can I help? She'll say, well, they need this. And how can we make that happen? And now there is an amazing NICU at St. Boniface Hospital that Barry Landry was instrumental in making happen. Because she really led with her generosity, uh, it allowed her to do things we would not have been able to do. It is because of Barry we have a 40 bed uh, and NICU, which is a neonatal ICU in Haiti. It is because of her the hospital has become so large in size and in concept. It is unique because she brings other people along to donate. Uh, so, so therefore her impact is clearly very significant. The kind of support and partnership that Barry offers is something that Paul Farmer knew very well and there were many times when Paul would go to her quietly as a friend and say, these are the things that are difficult to find partners for. The vital, clear, technical pieces that without, we wouldn't be able to keep things going. Because they're not as sparkly or as clear or as uh, straightforward and Barry is still there. I've also found that she is a visionary collaborator. She wants to bring people and organizations together to do good work together. Barry has been extraordinary as a leader of the board. Barry steps up and we all fall in line. And I think that everybody on the board has benefited from Barry's model of leadership and compassion. So sometimes I think, you know, when you have a situation like what's going on in Haiti right now, it's like things are failing left and right, and yet the needs don't disappear. And we have to always remember that there are human beings involved here. Barry's the type of person that sees all of that going on and says, this is the place for me to put my time and energy and resources. You, you don't abandon ship. <laughs> She's a leading voice, like raising the flag for people who are the most at risk, for making sure that we're focused on those people. She has made an incredible impact in that respect. I would say to Barry that I hope you know the deep impact that you're making for generations of children. You're making the world a more equitable place. I know how much St. Boniface means to you and this work. This honoring of you is so beautiful and deserved in every way. You're like a shining light that enables people to do great work, enables me and Refuge Point to do the work that we do, and we would not be here without you. I would say thank you first, because uh, she is a part of us that is needed all the time and uh, it is really, really appreciated from all of us, from all of us. Barry just represents for me the best of humanity in terms of generosity. The fact that Barry is willing to step up and help in Haiti whenever we've needed it has been truly incredible. Your commitment, your dedication, your generosity has saved countless of lives by what we have been able to accomplish with what you have given so generously to Health Equity International. Uh, and in addition, you have served with humility. I hope she's able to 
really take a step back and just appreciate, you know, the change that she's made happen over the last 10 to 15 years through her philanthropy. And so, Barry, congratulations and thank you for all you've done and especially for being such a dear friend. I hope tonight reminds you of how loved you are, of the impact that you have, and how much you change other people's lives. Hi, I'm Barry's son, Chris Landry. Thank you for joining Health Equity International and honoring my mother for all the hard work that she's done all over the world. Mom, because of you, the people of Haiti can get the compassionate care that they deserve, especially the children. You've created a safe space and safe environment for them to get the care that they need. Because of your learning and curiosity, children and people that are vulnerable all over the world have a better life because of you. So we thank you and we appreciate you and this honor is well deserved. I feel very grateful and lucky to have a role model such as yourself. I love you, Mom, and congratulations. Congratulations, Grandma Bear. We love you. We're proud of you. We're so inspired by your example. Enjoy your special night. Love you. Love you. That was beautiful. Thank you to everyone for sharing such moving tributes to Barry. And congratulations again, Barry. We are all so lucky to know you. Next, Dr. Wilfred Cadde, our Chief Medical Advisor, and Ms. Melissa Michelle, our Director of Operations, will introduce a tribute to tonight's other honorees, the hardworking staff of St. Boniface Hospital. Good evening. My name is Melissa Michelle, Director of Operations at Health Equity International, St. Boniface Hospital. And I am Dr. Wilfred Cadet, Chief Medical Advisor. It is our great pleasure to introduce you to our next honorees for tonight, our St. Boniface Hospital heroes. More than 500 Haitian health professionals work tirelessly every day to provide the best possible care to patients. Thank you for helping us celebrate them tonight. Our staff is confronting new and greater challenges every year, from escalating unrest to the COVID-19 pandemic to the 2021 earthquake. They have worked under unimaginably complex and difficult conditions, yet every time they have risen to meet these challenges with resolve and compassion. They know that every bottle of oxygen they procure and every dangerous road they traverse is helping to save a mother's life. Every vaccine they deliver is helping a child grow. The St. Boniface Hospital staff are building a healthier future for Haiti. No matter the role, they serve our patients with unwavering pride. Tonight, they lift their voices and we honor them. We proudly present to you our St. Boniface Hospital Heroes. Mon travail dans la santé, c'est un travail d'équipe lié. Chaque monde a une partition pour le jouer, que c'est professionnel de santé, que c'est monde qui a travaillé dans le support. Parce que mon nom, c'est tout le ensemble qui est lié, on ne peut pas séparer une partie de l'autre. Il y a un travail qui est pire, mais dans le travail équipe, c'est parce que nous sommes capables de mettre tête ensemble pour nous aller à travers les difficultés qui font que nous sommes toujours bons et bons services chaque jour. Ça qui permet que l'hôpital la grandit et que nous avons une renommée qui vient nationale. C'est une façon de collaborer pour faire le travail là, et puis la réalisation nous fait parce que nous sommes une rare institution qui a 500 malades par jour malgré une période difficile. La description c'est assurer l'hôpital avec l'oxygène tout le service. Je vais oxygène chaque matin dans tout le service et puis si je ne vais acheter. Il est 10 matin, je décharge la machine pour le prince. Et moi-même, à 4 heures, je suis chargé de la machine de ma pour me faire un café plus rapide de l'oxygène pour me faire mal à la vie. Ce qui fait que je suis fier de l'équipe, c'est que nous avons travaillé en communication. En disant, dans la période de Corona, nous avons tous collaboré ensemble pour nous faire des patients qui sont Même si je ne suis pas capable de l'oxygène, mais quand même, il y a une intervention, même si ce n'est pas moi qui est responsable, mais je suis quand même pour sauver les patients. Ça fait que je suis fier de l'équipe. Et la valeur qui permet de nous réussir dans le travail, c'est les gens que nous travaillons en équipe par rapport à la collaboration de chaque monde, la participation de chaque monde. Nous sommes capables d'intégrer tout le monde dans tout ça 
qui a fait pour nous offrir et un service et de maintenance nous sommes capables de et qui qui en faveur de tout le monde spécialement patients parce que si maintenant ce campé nous toujours réaliser que nous c'est moteur principal là donc nous faire en sorte que pour nous tous nous collaborer mettre maintenant pas là pour nous réussir notre travail nous ça fait me plus fier de travail moi c'est parce que dans soin n'a baio moun yo participer moun yo faire nos confiance et que yo senti yo même tout yo en confiance avec nous ça fait me sentir me plus fier Travail qui est plus important parce que vous ne pouvez pas travailler là tout seul, vous avez besoin de communiquer. Donc, vous avez un objectif qui est commun, chaque monde a une spécificité par vous. Mais il faut nous travailler en complémentarité l'une de l'autre pour travailler là capable de marcher. Donc, et moi, je fais supervision de nettoyage en dans l'hôpital là. Et moi, je fais formation pour l'équipe qui fait travailler ça tout. Et puis, assurer que le travail là toujours fait. C'est important parce que ça permet que nous lutter contre l'infection nosocomiale dans le service. Travail en équipe est important dans le cadre de travail parce que si nous ne pouvons pas collaborer avec l'un l'autre, et c'est ce que nous ne pouvons pas atteindre l'objectif. Travail est important pour l'hôpital parce que sans équipement biomédical qui n'est pas très bien fonctionnel, donc l'institution ne peut pas marcher bien et prestataire ne peut pas prendre une bonne décision pour être capable de délivrer un soin de qualité. Donc ce qui fait très fier de l'équipe, c'est que les nous avons nous un problème, nous toujours mis tête ensemble pour nous travailler. Donc sous cette motivation, c'est les patients qui ont pu recevoir soin. Donc c'est gratis que l'hôpital a offert soin. Donc les nous avons gardé que nous avons tout le monde qui a pas soin. Donc ça a motivé nous en pile pour nous continuer à travailler bien. Pigo de Fini, c'était catastrophe 14 août 2021 qui était passé et à toute quantité de malades que nous avons reçu dans le service d'urgence dans l'hôpital. Les choses qui étaient difficiles, ce qui était encouragé à continuer, c'était la motivation de nous avec l'empathie de nous avec le prochain. Ce qui fait que je suis plus fier. Le travail, c'est à chaque fois un patient guéri et rentre la cave. As we gather here tonight, I think it's very important that we remember the passing of our dear friend, mentor, board member, Dr. Paul Farmer. Paul was an inspiration for so much of our work and was such a guiding light behind all the decisions we made as an organization. His belief in health equity pushed us to start an HIV AIDS care and treatment program, a spinal cord injury program, and all the other projects that you see at the hospital today. Paul never accepted a given as a given and never accepted that anyone should receive care that wasn't the same that they would want for their own family members, mothers, fathers, children. He was such an inspiration to all of us and we miss him terribly. As we go forward, we will try to take all of Paul's lessons and guidance and words to heart as we continue to try and drive towards the health equity that so many of our patients need and deserve. Thank you, Connor, for that moving tribute to Dr. Farmer. It is difficult to convey what a profound impact he had on the world and what a truly remarkable man he was. I know his legacy will continue to live on in organizations like Health Equity International and in the thousands of lives he touched throughout his career, as well as in all of us who believe in the importance of taking action in the face of injustice and inequity. We have now arrived at the part of the evening that is all about taking action. I am pleased to introduce Jeffrey Lynch, Treasurer of Health Equity's Board of Directors. He will share with us the many different ways you and I can take action. I hope you will join me as I renew my commitment to Health Equity's critical work, saving lives in Southern Haiti. Good evening, everyone. 
I'm sorry to break into the program, but I want to make sure that everyone is aware that we just received an anonymous gift that's incredibly generous and will be matched tonight. Anonymous donor has given us a $250,000 matching gift, meaning that any gift you give tonight will be matched one for one up to $250,000. And for any new donors, those gifts will be matched two for one up to $250,000. This is an incredibly generous gift. It was given because this donor really understands the massive humanitarian crisis that we're confronting currently in Haiti, and we hope you'll be able to give tonight to meet this match. Thank you all, and we can return now to the general program. Good evening. My name is Jeff Lynch, and I've been proud to be the treasurer of Health Equities Board of Directors for more than 17 years. Fund a Need is one of my favorite parts of every gala because it gives us all some concrete ways to make a real difference in Haiti. As the money guy at Health Equity, I watch every dollar closely, and I can tell you with the utmost confidence that every dollar you give tonight will be put to work immediately and effectively. Now I'm gonna give you some examples of just how far your donation can go. And once I'm done, I'm gonna make my gift, and I hope you'll join me, and together we'll help Health Equity St. Boniface care for even more patients in the year to come. All you need to do is to scan the QR code on the screen or to visit HEI's website at www.hadyhealth.org to make your gift. Let's start out by talking about a $50,000 gift. We could use it in dozens of ways. For example, $50,000 would run our emergency room for an entire month providing urgent care for nearly 1,000 patient visits. St. Boniface has the only 24-7 ER in Southern Haiti, and it must always remain open for every patient in need, no matter what. I hope if you can, you will consider a gift of $50,000. A gift of $25,000 will have an enormous impact on our patients and their families. $25,000 could run our neonatal intensive care unit for a month providing life-saving care for over 100 babies. It could also help us conduct 2,500 pediatric malnutrition screenings. And with $25,000, we could provide two months worth of nutritious meals for every inpatient, helping them to regain their strength and their energy as they heal. Please consider a gift of $25,000 if you can. Now let's talk about $10,000. $10,000 could provide 40 C-sections for women in need or supply the hospital with life-saving oxygen for an entire year. A gift of $10,000 could help us train five medical residents, young clinicians fresh out of medical school who come to hone their skills in all of the hospital services and strengthen the Haitian health system. This is an investment really worth making. Now, here's the impact of a $5,000 gift. It's amazing how far $5,000 will go. $5,000 will help us purchase 20 new hospital beds. And as our patient numbers increase, we must ensure that we have room for each and every person in need. $5,000 could also send an aspiring young health professional to nursing school, or it could help us procure tools and replacement parts for our biomedical engineering repair program or urgently needed medications. If you haven't given a gift yet, please consider giving now. Your gift will benefit people just like the ones you met tonight. A gift of $2,500 can help our team of community health workers and provide education, vaccinations, and hospital referrals for people who otherwise would have no health care. $1,000 could vaccinate 3,000 children against illness such as diphtheria and typhoid. And finally, $500 could provide prenatal checkups for 10 pregnant women, helping to ensure potential complications are caught and they're treated early before they become life-threatening. There are so many ways your support of any amount can have an impact on our work and to help us save more lives. Believe me, as treasurer, I know that a gift as little as $20 is truly important to help us and to our patients. I'm going to support the patients at ATI St. Boniface, and I know that many of you will as well. 
Each of you received a great little booklet containing stories from St. Boniface Hospital and ways in which you can make a difference in the lives of our staff and our patients. I hope tonight and in the coming days, you'll take a moment to read this booklet and you continue to support this important life-saving work. All you need to do is to scan the QR code on your screen or to visit HEI's website to make your gift, www.haitihealth.org. Thank you again for standing with Health Equity and the people of Haiti tonight. Thank you, Jeff, for showing us all the ways supporters can help make an impact at Health Equity St. Boniface. And thank you all for joining us tonight and for being a part of this wonderful community. Now, Dr. Michelle David and Melissa Michelle will say good night on behalf of the entire organization. Thank you again for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed learning more about Health Equity International St. Boniface Hospital and the work we are able to do with your support. And we hope you are as proud as we are of everything we have accomplished by working together. Along with our successes, we have suffered great tragedies this year in Haiti. Every success we showed you tonight was your success as well. And your support helped ease the pain of our losses. Please take a moment to learn more about our work. And if you are able to make a donation, visit our website at healthequityinternational.org. You can also follow us on social media at Health Equity International on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and at St. Boniface IT on Twitter. On behalf of all our staff and patients at Health Equity International St. Boniface Hospital, thank you. Stay safe and have a good night.